Hey everybody, we are looking at section 1-6, which is midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. So we are going to start with midpoint and our midpoint formula. So what we're looking at is we have a segment AB, and the midpoint of that segment is M. We are finding the coordinates of M. So what we're going to do is if we have one point, which is A, I'm going to call it at the point X1, Y1. These subscripts are just saying this is one point, and then if we look over here at B with X2, Y2, this is just saying this is the other point. Please do not confuse X subscript 2 with X superscript 2, which is X squared. Okay, this is just saying this is a second X. What we are going to do is we're going to add the two X values and divide by 2. We're going to add the two Y values and divide by 2. So what we're going to do down here is we're looking at our graph. We have segment CD and we want to find the endpoints of, or excuse me, we want to find the midpoint of segment CD. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by writing our midpoint formula. So our formula is, again, we're adding those x's, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then comma, then we are adding our y's, y1 plus y2 dividing that by 2. We have a comma here because we are finding an ordered pair. If you do the midpoint formula and you end up with one number, you have done something wrong, go back and look. So I am going to label my points as x1, y1, and x2, y2. It does not matter which point you choose to be point 1 and which point you choose to be point 2. So I'm just going to call this one x1, y1, and this one over here x2, y2. So now I'm going to plug into my formula. Okay, so my midpoint is x1, which is negative 2, plus x2, which is 4, over 2. Then we're going to do the same thing with my y's. My y1 is negative 1. My y2 is 2 over 2. All right, then we are going to simplify each fraction. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2 over 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1 over 2. So my midpoint, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 half, just leave these as an improper or as a regular fraction. Okay, please do not change these to decimal. Not right now, just leave them be. Okay, so our midpoint for segment CD is at the point 1, 1 half, which is right here. So this is going to be my midpoint. Okay, and you can double check on your graph. Yes, it does look like it's in the middle. If you have any questions on that, please write them now on your note-taking guide. Okay, moving on to example two. What we are looking at here is we're finding the midpoint, or excuse me, we're told that M is the midpoint of segment AB. We're given the coordinates for A, and we are given the coordinates for the midpoint. We are finding the coordinates of the other endpoint. So this is different from the last example. The last example, we were given both endpoints. We wanted to find the midpoint. This one, we're given the midpoint, and we want to find one of the endpoints. So we are going to start by writing my midpoint formula. So it's x1 plus x2 over 2. And yes, you do need to memorize this formula. And y1 plus y2 over 2. Now, what does that equal? This equals the midpoint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this x midpoint. So I'm just going to use m to, don to notate that this is the midpoint of the x. This is the y value of the midpoint. So if I take a look back at the previous slide for just a second, this would be the x midpoint. This would be the y for the midpoint. So x, m, y, m. Okay, so that's all that I'm doing here is just giving the midpoint the coordinate with the subscript m. So that way, when I go to label my coordinates, 2, 2 is going to be x1, y1, because it is an end point. My midpoint here, m, is going to be x, m, y, m. So then from here, I'm going to plug in what I have. My midpoint is 4, negative 3. And the x value of one of my coordinates is 2. I am looking for the other x value of the other end point. Okay, my y1 is also 2. Okay, so I am looking for the coordinates of b, which is going to be x2, y2. I am looking to try to find these. Now, this is not an equation that I can solve as is. What I want to do is I want to take 
everything that has to do with an x. And I'm going to write it down in one equation. So I'm going to say my x midpoint value is going to be 4. And when I take 2 plus some other number and divide it by 2, I'm going to get 4. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my y's. Okay, I'm going to take this negative 3 and this um, 2 plus y2 over 2, and I'm going to set that up in one equation. So I'm going to get negative 3, which is the y value of my midpoint, is equal to 2 plus y2 over 2. Okay, from here, then we can solve each of our equations to get the value for x2 and the value for y2. So that way I can find my ordered pair of my final coordinate, or my final endpoint. So the first thing that I want to do is get rid of the fraction. So we multiply both sides by 2. And I'm going to take 2 times 4. That's going to give me 8. And then these are going to cancel out. Let me change colors here. Okay, so this is going to give me 8. These will cancel, and I'm going to be left with 2 plus x2. Then I want to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to get 6 is equal to x2. Now, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Get rid of my fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. This is going to give me 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Again, my 2's here will cancel, and I'm going to get 2 plus y2. Again, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm going to get negative 8 is y2. So this means that the coordinates for b is 6, negative 8. Eight. Okay, again, if you have questions on that, which I can imagine that you do, we will go over this again in class tomorrow. This is the hardest example that we have today. Okay, moving on. For example three, we are looking at the distance formula. The distance formula is the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. It is also finding the length of a segment because the length of a segment is how far apart those two points are. And again, yes, this is an equation that you do need to memorize. This one and midpoint we will use all year long, so they are formulas that you need to know by heart. Again, we have two coordinates that we're labeling as x1, y1, and x2, y2, and again, it does not matter which point you call 1 and which point you call 2, you are just staying consistent with your points, okay? So when we do the distance formula, it is the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared, All right? So when we look at example three. We are finding the length of segment AB. Remember, that's what it means when there's no bar above it. And the length of segment CD. So I am going to start again by writing the distance formula. So the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and start by finding the length of segment AB. So the first thing that I'm going to do with AB is I'm going to label the point. So this point A is the point 0, 3. And I'm going to go ahead and label that as X1, Y1. B is at the point 5, 1. And I'm going to go ahead and label that as X2, Y2. All right, so the length of segment AB. I am going to plug those values into the distance formula. So I'm going to do x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 0, quantity squared, plus y2, which is 1, minus y1, which is 3, again, quantity squared. So from here, please, I want to kind of highlight that you need to write the square root every single time until you have actually square rooted your number because otherwise at the end you will have the wrong answer and forget to go back and square root it. Please do not be lazy with writing down your equations. All right, so from here we're going to go 5 minus 0 is 5, squared is 25. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. So when I add these together, I'm going to get the square root of 29. Feel free to just leave it like this right now. Don't worry about putting it into a calculator. Okay, then we're going to look at segment CD. 
color didn't change here. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to look at the length of segment CD. So again, I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to label my points. So point C is at the point negative 1, 1. And I'm going to go ahead and label that as X1, Y1. And D is at the point negative 3, negative 4. And I'm going to label that as X2, Y2. So from here, we're going to do the square root. Again, we're going to plug into that distance formula. So um, X2 is negative 3 minus x1, which is a negative 1. Remember that when we are subtracting a negative, we are doing the same thing as adding. And we are going to get negative 3 minus a negative 1, which is the same thing as saying negative 3 plus 1. Plus um, our y2, which is negative 4. Didn't mean to hit a comma here. Minus our y1, which is a 1. And again, quantity squared. So when we do this part, we have negative 3 minus 1, which is a negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Okay. Then we have negative 4 minus 1, which is a negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. Please make sure that in this second step, you should never have a negative underneath your radical because anytime you square that negative, it is a positive number. So the square root of CD is the square root of, or the length of segment CD is the square root of 29. Notice that these are the same. So that means that we can say yes, that segment AB is congruent to segment CD because they have the same length. So these are my three answers, the length of each segment as well as the fact that they are congruent. If you have any questions about that, please go ahead and write it down now. Okay. I would like for you to go ahead and please pause your video and try this problem on your own. You're looking at the points A and B as your endpoints of the segment. You are going to find the midpoint and find the length of the segment. So if you would please pause your video and do that now. Okay, guys, so if you need to, go ahead and take a minute to pause your video to check your answers. Uh, notice that one of the first things I did was that I labeled A as X1, Y1, and B as X2, Y2. If you labeled them the other way, with this being X2, Y2, and this being X1, Y1, it would not matter. Okay, it would be the same thing. You'd end up with the same answers. So go ahead. Again, the first thing that I did was I wrote my formula down plug these numbers right into your formula and just simplify from there. Um, if you left it as square root of 100, please watch for your perfect squares. Go ahead and take that down, okay? But if it's a decimal, you can leave it as a square root for now, all right? If you have any questions, please write that down on your paper. All right, the last thing that I kind of want to bring in, we're not going to do a whole lot of work with it right now, is the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, Pythagorean theorem is when you have a right triangle. It must be a right triangle. Okay, and your two legs are sides A and B, and your hypotenuse is always C. So if I draw a right triangle, okay, across from the right angle is always your hypotenuse. This is always C. It does not matter which of these sides you call A and which side you call B. Okay, it's the same thing either way. Again, your hypotenuse is always C. Your hypotenuse is the longest side, always across from your right angle. Okay, our Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is how we can find missing sides of a uh, right triangle. When we do our distance formula, if I wanted to find the length of segment C, I could do two things. I could do the distance formula using these points, plugging them in for x1, y1, and x2, y2. Or I could drop the perpendiculars and the horizontals here and count these, count these, and do a squared plus b squared and solve for c squared. The distance formula is the Pythagorean theorem. They are the same thing. They do the same thing, okay? Um, but again, if you have questions on that, make a little note, but we will work with that a little more tomorrow in class. Hope you guys have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow.